All right, this first lecture we're going to do today is an introduction to water potential. This relates directly to the uh, potato lab that we just finished up today in class. Uh, the equation we'll be focusing on uh, will be uh, the one seen on the screen right here. Uh, that'll, that'll come up over and over again throughout lecture, but uh, before we get into that equation and what that equation exactly means, uh, I would like to do a little review. Uh, <clears throat> this slide and called it another way to look at diffusion osmosis relates to both uh, the uh, cell lab that we created with the colored water and also relates to the uh, lab that we are doing with the potato cells uh, today. Uh, this says, you know, if we have uh, animal cells and we place them to three different solutions of unknown sucrose concentration, uh, we have a solution A, B, and C. Uh, they tell us the starting cell size right here in micrometers. Uh, and then see that in, in cell, uh, the s cell in solution A increases, increases, and increases in, uh, in size. What might that mean? Well, you know, why is it increasing in size? You, you want to take into consideration uh, some of the things that we've been doing in class, that if we have a cell in some sort of solution, what would cause it to increase in size? Well, then obviously something would have to be going in. You'd want to relate things, uh, terminology like uh, hypo and hypertonic uh, solutions to this type of situation. Uh, and you certainly could start talking about, is this, a, is this a situation where the solution that it's in, is it high sugar, is it low sugar, or would it maybe be a no sugar solution uh, that would cause uh, water to rush in? Uh, and uh, obviously uh, lots of things we can consider for this. And so uh, I would leave this more as an open-ended type question if I used it uh, more than likely and ask you to kind of write about it. So maybe uh, it'd be a good essay type question, but certainly the AP people could relate uh, to something like this. So something to consider just as a review, another way to uh, approach this stuff as we uh, get ready for the exam next week. Well, the lecture uh, today is meant to, to revolve around water potential, and so that question, what is water potential? I've got some notes here, and I do expect you to understand and, and know these things, so great thing about doing it this way as a, as a webcast uh, is you can pause it at any point in time, uh, write down what you need to write down, and uh, review it if you ever need to review it. Uh, so water potential is uh, this idea that we've been talking about uh, for a couple of days now that water is going to move from areas of high to low, this high to low, high to low, high to low. But what causes it to move uh, from, from high to low? What are the factors that come into play? And, and really there are two factors that are going to come into play that we're going to concentrate our efforts on, uh, and that is the actual solute concentration. We've been talking about that mostly in class now, is that um, the solute can play a role in where there is more or less water, distilled water having no uh, solute will will have a, a higher water concentration, but 100% water. And then as you add more and more uh, solutes, there's less and less water. And that certainly plays a big role in where, uh, in which direction water is going to move across membranes and such. Uh, something we haven't discussed yet, but I've heard some people in class allude to, uh, is this concept of pressure. Uh, as pressure builds, or as pressure is put on a cell, how might pressure affect uh, the movement of water, and we'll do a little bit of fun with math to see how that uh, gets involved. Uh, so these two factors, uh, solute concentration and pressure, uh, are incorporated into a single measurement, a single idea. Together, they, the, the addition of these two things uh, is what we call uh, actual water potential. And, and this symbol here, uh, the Greek letter, I think it's psi, is how it's pronounced. Uh, that Greek letter is the symbol used uh, for water potential. So you'll see that pitchfork looking shaped thing uh, over and over again. <clears throat> uh, simple kind of definition of uh, water potential. Water will move across the membrane from the solution with higher water potential to the solution with the, the lower water potential. And um, that's stuff that you might say, oh, I knew that. We've been talking about high to low for a couple of days now. A uh, bit more on water potential. Water potential is determined by solute potential. And so the solute potential, if you look at that, uh, that is this symbol here, the um, pitchfork thing sub S uh, is solute potential, and then also the pressure potential, which is this pitchfork thing sub P. So those two symbols 
will come into play and you can see the addition sign in the middle when you add those two things together you get an overall water potential this um, ability for water to move from uh, an area of high water potential to an area of low water potential and we will start to play some uh, games I'll say uh, with with math and, and uh, the solute and pressure uh, situation uh, to try to understand you know things you know if this is uh, if this is an animal cell obviously we've been talking about water going in but why is water going into that cell we've been focusing on um, solutes but how does pressure come into play as well uh, we'll also be kind of considering the fact that water potential uh, is, is a greater factor when it comes to uh, how it works with uh, plants versus animal cells uh, plant cells are oftentimes uh, more square in nature or rectangular shaped they have a, a cell wall on the outside that helps to to maintain some of that uh, rigid shape to it and then the cell membrane kind of uh, is, is um, a little more flexible on the inside and it's the amount of water that is inside the cell uh, especially in some of these central water vacuoles that starts to push the cell membrane up and out against uh, the cell wall uh, helping it to maintain some shape and so the fact that plant versus animal cells uh, are a little bit different animal cell has just the cell membrane and no cell wall the fact that they are different uh, certainly will come into play as we uh, discuss these concepts of water potential uh, let's focus a little bit on the uh, two variables that come into play here. The solute potential is uh, the, the concept, and you can see the symbol there, the concept that pure water uh, does have a solute potential, but that solute potential for pure water, that would be distilled water, so we've got some DW here, uh, is going to be zero. So distilled water is always going to have a solute potential of zero. Solute potential of zero. And solute potential never can be uh, a positive number. It, it is always going to be a negative number. Uh, adding more solute to a solution, so if I have a solution of water here, and if it's just distilled water at the start, uh, there's no solute, and so it's, it, it's zero. And as I start to add some solute, so let's, let's make a, let's see, uh, we could put uh, just be a, a salt uh, shaker. So I've got some salt in here and if I'm going to start dumping some salt in if I add a little bit of salt I'm going to be adding a little bit of solute uh, and then my solute potential is going to become uh, a little bit more negative as I add some solute if I add solute it becomes more negative if I add even more solute to this situation so it's going to become uh, saltier or if it's just solute, I like to use the term solutier, which I know isn't a word, but it's a word that helps me remember that it's going to get more and more solute. Uh, it's going to continue to get more and more and more negative the more solute that I add. So adding more solute is a negative experience, and solute potential becomes more and more negative. Uh, oftentimes I'm going to be talking about... Um, numbers and I'm just gonna make some up so if I add some solute uh, at some point in time it's gonna be a, a negative one solute potential and then as I add even more solute it might become negative two and then eventually negative three solute potential uh, probably by uh, Thursday maybe into Friday we'll discuss how exactly to get the solute potential and get a number that means something but for most of our purposes we can just make up numbers saying uh, more solute more negative and that'll be something you'll continue to, to focus on. More solute, more negative when it comes to solute potential. Pressure potential is a little bit different. We, we go with this uh, su uh, pitchfork sub P idea. And so we've got this symbol to represent pressure potential. And it is the sum of all pressures that are found on water. Uh, they are uh, measured in millipascals or in bars. Either one of those are acceptable measurements of pressure. Oftentimes, I'm going to just skip the, the units all together and talk about the pressures in terms of numbers, uh, just whole numbers, to help us understand that pressures can be uh, both positive and negative in nature. Uh, probably in lecture, uh, more in class, uh, as I go through a couple more examples, we'll talk about what is turgor pressure. But turgor pressure is that outward pressure uh, as a cell, as a plant cell, 
would, would have surface pressure. As a plant cell fills up with more and more water, it starts to push that membrane out against the cell wall. And that membrane pushing out against the cell wall is called turgor pressure. It causes a plant cell to become what's called turgid and uh, have turgidity. So turgor pressure is this inward pressure going out. And the only way to get this inward pressure coming out is to have water inside, uh, enough water inside to push that cell membrane up against the cell wall. Uh, not all cells have enough pressure, and we'll look at a few examples as we go through some of this. Uh, there is also some pressure kind of in, in the other direction. We could call it wall pressure. Uh, equal and opposite force exerted by the cell wall. It counteracts the movement of water due to osmosis. And so we also get some pressure uh, due to the wall of the, the membrane, kind of pushing back on the situation. Uh, and I think I've got an example here. I uh, came across this picture, uh, and it shows uh, in, in letter A up here uh, the idea of solute potential. The cell is in equilibrium with the surrounding solution uh, in this case, but if we take that cell out, and now you can see some little red dotted um, solute particles in there, and we place it into pure water, uh, or distilled water is what we're going to be placing it in, uh, we know that water is going to move in because it's 100% water on the outside and less than 100% inside, and so we can see the arrows moving the water into where there is less water from high to low, high to low. So water will move in in this case due to the solute potential. Uh, on the other hand, they've got the pressure idea here. We've got wall pressure pushing up on the cell wall from outside of the cell, some pressure onto the wall, and then we've got the turgor pressure due to water going in to the cell there's uh, this idea that the, the water pushing the membrane up against the wall is now saying, you know, hey, let me out, let me out, let me out, and there's a little bit of pressure on the wall. Good news for a cell is that the cell wall uh, is very rigid uh, and will not likely break. So uh, a very sturdy cell wall helps uh, to allow for that turgor pressure and, and keep the, the plant cell maintaining its, its shape throughout.